In this video, I'm going to talk about GD&T coaxiality tolerances. So when you have two diameters and you want them to be coaxial, there's a couple different ways to do it. Now, the first and probably more common is to use position. So in this drawing right here, datum A is this larger diameter. We've got the second diameter related to it with this tolerance. So a position of 20 thousandths to datum A. Now, what this means in practice, when you inspect it, you're gonna capture the datum axis at RFS, because there's no material condition modifier here. And you're gonna see if the axis of this one inch diameter is within a cylindrical tolerance zone of 20 thousandths. So what that looks like, say you grab the part with a chuck, right? You've established datum A is the axis of that chuck or inspection equipment, however you do it. Now, the other diameter, you want to grab it with like a ring gauge, something that collapses onto the diameter and contacts the high spots. The axis of that inspection equipment is the axis of this feature. So position takes into account high points to give you an axis. Now, you find out if this axis of the inspection equipment and the diameter is within a tolerance zone that's acceptable here, okay? So position is great for fit up. When you just need a bolt to fit through a hole or a diameter to fit through a hole, you're really concerned about the high points so that the thing fits up. What position isn't as good for is overall balance. The position tolerance doesn't directly control the uh, form of the surface. So the other thing position is great with is you can use the MMC modifier to allow more tolerance if the diameter comes in smaller. It'll still fit up the exact same. You could also apply a maximum material condition to the datum. With that, you don't have to have something that collapses onto the datum. All you need is for this datum to be set up at its MMC, so in this case, 2.02 uh, .2, inches, and you fit the datum through there. As long as the datum fits, and this fits through uh, its virtual condition, which is 1.06, so the MMC plus the geometric tolerance, the part would be good. So you can make a gauge for that part. You could also inspect it like you would RFS, you're just losing out on some potential tolerance. So the next tolerance we'll look at is runout. So there's two kinds of runout. This is circular runout. Total runout looks like this. Runout is a very different tolerance than position. You're gonna grab the datum the same way, but instead of trying to find the axis of this diameter, we're just gonna rotate the part 360 degrees, put an indicator on the diameter, and measure the indicator movement. So runout, circular runout, controls the circularity of the feature and the location of the surface to the datum axis, but not the features axis to the datum axis. Runout has nothing to do with size. So the size tolerance can be very large, but the actual feature has to be circular. So whether it comes in large or small, it's still gotta have that circularity. Whereas position, if you use the MMC modifier and the, the feature comes in small, you can have a lot of form variation. So circular runout simulates, it, it gives you circularity as well as location of the surface to an axis. Total runout is a different requirement. So circular runout, you check here, spin 360, check here, check here, check here. Total runout, you have to keep the the indicator parallel to the axis of the datum and move it like this, right? So total runout gives you cylindricity 
as well as the location of the surface to an axis. So it's a much more difficult tolerance to achieve and inspect. Runout is used for parts that spin because you control the, the form of the surface so you have more control over the overall balance of the part. So things like wheels, axles, pulleys are often controlled with runout. The next tolerance is profile. Profile isn't used with diameters as much, but it certainly can be used. If we're gonna use a profile here, we have to get rid of the plus or minus tolerance and make the diameter basic. At that point, the profile is gonna control the form, the location, the orientation, and the size. So with run out, we can put the indicator here, zero the indicator, and then check the part. With profile, we have to measure from the datum axis to out here and then see if it's within this 20 thousandths. So you're measuring the size as well as the location. So it's a much more difficult tolerance to inspect. Runout was typically used for parts that look like this. So something like a keyway. Before ASME 2018, if you had a part, a cylindrical part with a key in it, you had to use profile because runout had to be uh, 360 degrees with no breaks. In the 2018 standard, now you can use runout with something like this, so you don't have to use a uh, profile. The idea with, with that is, you know, if you check this part for runout, your indicator is going to drop in here and runout fails. 2018 standard says, nah, you can just check, you know, 280 degrees around it, and that's good enough, right? The last is concentricity. Now, concentricity has been discontinued for the 2018 standard, but it's still on a lot of drawings. Concentricity is a totally different thing than any of the tolerances I've talked about here. Concentricity controls the derived median line of the feature to the datum axis. So a derived median line is gathered by taking all of the opposing points and finding out what the median point is. So let me give you an example here. So say so we take that part, we check these two points and find out where the middle is. We check these two, find out where the middle is, and on and on. 360 degrees around the part throughout the whole length of the part. So it's a lot of points to check, right? you're gonna end up with a cloud of points in the middle of the part. Concentricity, this number right here, this 20 thousandths, is the diameter of the tolerance zone that uh, all of those points should fit into. So we're gonna come from our datum axis here, right? This is datum A, say this is our axis. We'll have a tolerance zone. The tolerance zone is located, it's coaxial with the datum axis, and all of the derived median points need to fall within this 20 thousandths for the concentricity tolerance to pass. So what concentricity is doing is separating the form requirement from runout. Otherwise, it's very similar. So a part shaped like this, right? An octagon could be uh, concentric to a cylinder because if you take any two points, they could be uh, in the middle of the part. So parts that are, have even number of sides can be concentric. It would not pass a runout check, right? So what concentricity was used for is when you need to control the balance of a spinning part. Now, I would argue that most parts that spin really fast, you know, industrial turbines and stuff, they get produced and then they get balanced, right? They put it on a machine and they'll grind out a little chunk to balance it. So trying to achieve that through manufacturing is, is kind of big ask, but that's what concentricity is for. Again, it's been discontinued, so you shouldn't put it on new drawings, but you should know what it is in case you stumble on it in an older drawing, okay? So that's all I had for today. Just a quick discussion of GDT coaxiality tolerances. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe and check out the channel for more content coming soon.